What's up, everyone? It's Gavin or Tweet. What's good? What's good? It's Marcus or Pink. What up? What up? It's Charles or Chuck. What's going on, everyone? You got Matt or Has. Bring it up. Bad and clean up, as I do every week when I'm here. What's going on, guys? Good to see y'all. Listen to the episode last week. It was good. It's a fun episode. It was a good time. We're going to move on to a very important episode. And per- I don't know if you guys feel this, but... When we do tier list episodes, I get so stressed because, like, there, there's your opinion. Like, it's just out there now. And, like, there are going to be comments for sure. And I think the thing I'll say is that I stopped stressing so much about ordering everything. And I think, especially, like, talking over it with you guys, I feel more comfortable uh, just kind of reviewing here. And then if there's discrepancies elsewhere, it's all good. But before we get into that, Charles, can you tell me about the Patreon? Marcus, don't laugh, too. I've been seeing the comments. I don't like when you laugh at Charles. <laughs> Charles is shilling. Bro, I just Good can't stuff. be happy. Like, that's that's crazy. Anyway. <clears throat> of course, if you guys do enjoy the content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And let us know what characters you think are in the top five of the tier list. We want to know your opinions as well. If you guys are listening to us on Apple and Spotify, make sure to rate the podcast. And, of course, we have the Patreon episode today. And I think this is a really spicy topic. I came up with it myself because I love hating. But the most hated, so throughout your competitive and viewership experience, your most hated Smash character throughout every single Smash game. So we got like Smash 4 Bayo, we got Ultimate Steve on the table, we got Ultimate Game Watch. There's so many characters to hate in Super Smash Bros. So we're going to go ahead and pick one. And if you guys want to hear our thoughts on that, you can go ahead and hit that up on the Patreon content. And you know what? On the comments below, why don't you let us know what your most hated Smash character as well. So top five most hated Smash characters, let it rip in the comments. And I'm really excited to get into this tier list episode. And if we have some extra time at the end, we can go over some rankings. And I know there was a couple of tournaments, but this this episode, we definitely want to focus on the tier list just to give you guys like a little bit of an update. Like, man, the last time we did a tier list episode, it was, God, like Steve wasn't even an S tier. So it was like a long time ago, probably over two years ago, I want to say, yeah. maybe a year ah, half. It, it was a long, long time. We definitely yeah. should have done some but it's okay watch the throne incentives you guys paid for this so we are now gonna do it and i'm i'm ready to kick it off i mean now do we save the best for last we got to save tweaks for last yes right? yes all but right, don't so, worry so i'm what? sure is it commentators you know, first all right is this how we're doing it well charles you're definitely i'm not going first i'm too scared all right, all right. dude Let's I was go. Say, i'm down to go first Let's like, I, I'm, go. I'm ready either not, of this work all right not, we get producer chris to throw charles's <laughs> list up first go charles go so for my tier list, I kind of, I tried to order the whole tier list, but I'm not going to cap. I really don't give a fuck about mid tiers and bottom tiers. All right. So <laughs> like it was hard enough for me to give a shit about high tiers in terms of ordering. I did try to order everything the best of my ability. Uh, so in SSS tier, we have Steve. And the reason why I put him on his own tier, now obviously like triple S, I'm just kind of trolling it. Realistically, it's like SS tier and then S tier, then yeah, maybe so on and so forth. But I forgot to change it. But the thing about Steve is he has a very low floor and a very high ceiling. I think in terms of potential, he has the most potential in the game. And on top of that, you can play him very simple and he's very effective at all levels of play. Uh, I almost want to say, oh God, it, it's it's so hard because there's Brawl Meta Knight, but I, I think Steve is up there in contention for like strongest Smash character in like Smash history just because of how he warps the game as well. There's never been a character that creates terrain quite like Steve, so I don't really have to justify Steve. Uh, I mean, obviously, he's really strong. And then second, we have Sonic. Uh, it's like, it's so crazy to me because even when I try to think of Sonic's bad matchups, they're very doable. They're very, very doable, and on top of that, like Sonic's offense is getting so crazy as well as his defense. So this character really does it all, and the only weakness he has is his weight. That's literally it. I I can't think of any other weakness uh, for Sonic. Game Watch is a character that has, you know, obviously been super meta. I have him as number three. Very simple. I, I I don't think it's weird because Game Watch's ceiling is like perfective advantage state, and I think. I don't think Mia plays advantage to the eight perfect, but he plays it near perfect. So we're we're kind of seeing we're we're kind of seeing uh, we're pretty close to the ceiling of Game Watch in my opinion. Um, but that ceiling is very high because of you know flow chart advantage state. I think is, is a very strong thing to have in tournament. I still have a lot of faith in Pyramithra, and that is going to round out my second tier. I, and then I have I, Rob pretty high. I have a question. Just looking, What's up? I think yeah. So I. I Look, just talking about the structure that you have, it's funny because this time around I did way more tiers to explain and like have more 
at first it was just to organize my thoughts and then it just became right. i'm gonna actually do this for the whole tier list but i really enjoy so your a tier is like characters we a couple different things like characters we've seen have big results i think is kind of where they and, and marth oh actually marth got a win on riddles thing come on riddles man uh Wait, marth is up there <laughs> Martha's is an A tier, yeah. Sorry to which to is like halfway down to be fair because my again, yeah, I, I, I changed it, high. but it didn't save. But yeah, like B, A tier is kind of like that's high for Martha. high mid, high mid, high mid tier, and then yeah, I, it's I guess A for me, my A tier is high tier, and then my S tier, I think that's top tier in my opinion. But I I also think there's like I don't know. To me, S tier is like meta characters, and then like the top two tiers are like omega broken they're of uh, cut above the rest right and then after yeah. that there's the tiers are have way more characters in them uh but yeah i mean like even like wario bayo i mean realistically they're pretty low right like they're, they're still pretty up there i think they're high tiers uh in all rights and then b tier are characters where i'm kind of like eh well and even honestly like the back half of a tier are kind of meh characters as well you know yeah, a young Link too. You have him at the end of A. I had such a tough time with that character, like where exactly to place him. I feel like he's he's just kind of in a weird spot, and I feel that way about a lot of characters who are kind of around that level. I think, and I think something we're gonna see a lot. You talked about how none of us really had Steve that high on our tier list. I think another fumble all four of us had was uh, Sephiroth and where he was and where he will be. <coughs> uh going forward i i had a hard time with sephiroth on this tier list and i see you put him at the top of b yeah that's probably that that's probably the lowest i've ever seen sephiroth on any tier list but uh i don't know i feel like a tier list can be deceiving just by the way things are like um divided in chunks and everything but this is very low. I don't think many people would think Inkling is better than Sephiroth or something like that. But uh, I think my first question is, because I had such a hard time with it, like, where do you decide where the cutoff is for tiers? It's such a vague and difficult thing to do for me personally, as someone that doesn't have like some sort of extra decider for like what a tier means like i just have like sa like i just keep it simple so it's so hard to decide like who is the last character that deserves to be in blah 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 tier like it's, it's yeah difficult. the the way i did it the way i organized and we'll get to, we'll get to mine eventually i literally pictured you know that meme it's all the lunch tables like who's everyone sitting with yeah that's how that's how i did it dude that was like together does it, like, right mm -hmm. does it uh, like yes that? like like, does Captain Falcon, is he, is he more like, this is just an example, like, is, is Falcon more like Terry, or is he more like, uh, K. Rule or some shit, you know, it's like, yeah. or like, like Donkey Kong, and it's like, eh, I guess he's kind of closer to the Donkey Kong than he is to Terry, like, I don't know, uh, you'll yeah. see when I, so what I did, I kind of took an opposite approach, where I added a ton of tiers in between the conventional tiers. That's what I did. And then I, and then I was just like, they don't really fit at either, so they kind of have their own table. And then I put more people at the table with them. I'm like, oh yeah, Mega Man's like weird because he doesn't really fit. Like on Charles's list, I guess it would be that area of like Meta Knight, Ice Climbers, Ryu, Young Link, Sephiroth, Ness. Like they all kind of could be fluid, like kind of go either way, it seems like. So Dang, I do that, have Sephiroth really low. Holy you, shit. You do. He's, he's very I, I, close I, to Lucas. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like... Now that I'm looking at the characters above, I'm like, eh, maybe it deserved to be an A tier, but I got I, you know what? I'm standing by it. This character fucking crazy, <laughs> yeah. tall, I think light. Like he's I, not I just, great. He's I, not I think great. about Sephiroth winning a tournament, and I'm like, how do you even fucking get there? Like, there's yeah. so many top tier matchups that are so tournament. hard. Yes, like a like a really really big tournament. Like, and I, I guess this isn't the, always the correct way to look at it because generally I always look like if if this character's solo mained, how like what are the chances of it winning a tournament type right. thing, right? Like I'm I, I always yeah. I'm always the type of person that values consistency and Sephiroth's matchup spread is so like the the characters he yeah. loses to, it's like, dude, how the fuck do you win against some of the top tiers that just run Sephiroth over? Mm -hmm. But then like Ice yeah. Climbers is probably worse in terms of volatility because like, but at least vol like here's my thing: when Sephiroth wins a matchup, it's not like Icy's. Like Icy's, at least I'm getting. At least I'm doing like a crapshoot. You know what I'm saying? I, I maybe maybe against some of the characters that you just keep away. But even then, I just feel like 
the area Sephiroth covers and how much active frames he's covering it with is, to me, it's just not really impressive. Like, I'd rather reduce the range and have way less lag, like a Lucina or something. Like, obviously, th there's just a million better sword characters that does what Sephiroth th does, but yeah. better. And the only niche thing is, like, oh, does this character not kill you at 90? Like, how long can you have wing? And I, t to me, it's just that that's not a lot of matchups. No. in my opinion and like ice climbers like if ice climbers is fighting fox it's like holy shit the way fox has to play is like completely different right and that's obviously a meta character and it's like when you look at that matchup specific it's like oh okay well at least ice climbers can kind of shit on certain meta characters right like Sheik, fox any combo orientated character where the hit stun on nana changes the whole game completely so at least with ice climbers you're you're rolling the dice, but your lows are really low, but your highs are really high. Sephiroth feels to me like, oh, okay, your lows are still just as low as the Ice Climber lows, but your highs are not even close to Ice Climber highs. But, I mean, overall, Sephiroth is probably better than Ice Climbers because just the overall matchup spread will be more consistent overall. But I just, I feel like Sephiroth's lows never, it it never justifies his highs, to me I at least. I think with the character like Ices, and and I did group a bunch of these characters together, like Luigi, where it's like, yeah, you might have a dog shit matchup, but if you grab them three times, that's cool. You get a game like that. That really rules in in a lot of different ways. Like, and I don't know. I, I have some characters with a similar philosophy all kind of grouped together, where it's like, yeah, you have a seventy thirty matchup, but your win condition doesn't change. It's just really fucking hard to get. So that's that's pretty cool. Unlike Sephiroth, where it's like. If you lose, like, I don't even know what you try to do to try to win a matchup that you lose. If you're getting out frame data, if you're getting rushed down, there's not, like, real answers to that. You know, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I yeah. felt about it. I guess the main things that most people would ask Charles, especially towards the top of the tier list, is still a believer in Pikachu? Yes, I still believe uh, in Pikachu and Joker. I have them. So yeah. I'll, I'll just list out my S tier uh, real quick for the audio listeners. So after Pyramithra, that's the fourth best character. And then going into the my A tier. Um, so this is a different tier. Next up is Rob, Joker, Pikachu, Min Min, Fox, Cloud, Pac-Man, Snake, Corrin, Peach, Sora, Diddy Kong, Sheik, Kazuya, Lucina, Mario, Terry, Politano, Wolf, Roy, and Shulk. That rounds out my S tier. So I'm a still a believer. I, I, I think standouts here are I'm still a believer of Joker and Pikachu. Um, uh, Fox is ninth. So I, I have a lot of faith in Fox. Cloud 10th. I still have a lot of faith that Pac-Man and Snake are probably really, really high. And Corrin are really high on this tier list. Yeah, and then Sora is pretty high as well. Pikachu, Pac-Man, Sora were going to be the main things I wanted to hear about from Charles. Yeah, I think for me, uh, the way Shiny Mark plays Pikachu, I think is the optimal way of playing Pikachu. Mm -hmm. This character is very, very strong defensively and is very, very strong off stage. And we are, have already seen the meta kind of creep towards favoring characters that are good off stage. Look at uh, of the top four, my top four characters, like two of them are ridiculous off stage Sonic and Game and Watch. They punish you off stage yeah. so hard. And Pikachu. When you have the option to not get edge guarded by these characters, that's so that's so so important. Uh, obviously, Pikachu's weight and then the hurt box shift of quick attack can hurt, and you can kind of get random out sometimes. But I think if you play really defensive, and even though SDI is a thing, you know what I mean, and people have gotten a lot better, Pikachu can still force you in off stage situations. So, and Pikachu, very similar to Sonic, is a character that can faint low with their body so they put their body low you position low but you can still cover high like sonic because sonic can spring up and back air but pikachu can thunder right like double jump yeah. thunder or something to catch you high so uh there's really only two characters in the game that can edge guard high while being positioned low and i personally value that really really high yeah and uh then, i see were the were the next oh, uh, characters you wanted me to talk about gavin it was pikachu i just i was just most curious about Pikachu, Pac-Man, and Sora. I just, just based around mm -hmm. the tiers and stuff, and something that's like maybe viewers aren't uh, too used to seeing. Yeah, I, uh, I. So I had in my last tier list about two years ago, I had Pac-Man as five. So yeah. I still think Pac-Man is very strong. You have a frame three Nair, so you have a frame six option out of shield. Just to put it in context, that is one frame faster than Cloud Up B. So it's very good. It hits very low. It covers both sides. You warp the game a lot 
And I think in the beginning, we saw T getting better results because it was a bigger knowledge check at the beginning of the meta. But I still think Pac-Man is just, I, I value a zoner that puts a piece of terrain. It's not as good as Steve, but like you're putting a piece of terrain on the board. And then on top of that, you have really quick mashing options like Rising Fair, you have Rising Nair. So you have all of these like combo, or, like it's a zoner that has good out of shield. It's a zoner that has a combo starter fair, right? So it's like you, you can scrap up close and the only thing, and he has one of the best recoveries in the game as well. Like, I think people aren't hitting the pellet as well, like covering side B as good as they can, but I think that is very consistent. So when I think of most meta characters, it's like, if you have a bad recovery, like Min Min or Cloud, that I still have really, really high up there, your onstage present is so strong that I can put you up there. But like, to me, pac mans such a consistent bundle because generally you're always getting back to stage. The only caveat is you don't really kill early unless you get a bell set up, right? And I think people are playing around bell a lot better, uh, but I still value that really, really high. And then Sora, I think, is a character that has a very high floor, high ceiling. And I think even simple Sora is very strong. And I think we are also seeing, um, I know Raman was talking about platform camping with Sora, which is really, really powerful with like Nair and stuff like that. So when, when you can camp on top of a platform and have a threat, it's really strong. He's one of the harder characters to ledge trap as well. Um, obviously he has a bunch of other weaknesses, like his double jump is probably the thing that holds him back the most, but his double jump is the thing that opens up his crazy combo game with like the instant double jump stuff. And we're seeing Sora have a lot of success kind of just playing basic where maybe they'll do like one or two reps, but we don't really see touch of deaths too much from Sora, but that is something I am taking into account when we're looking at Sora is essentially like his zero to death or his infinites that he has, right? Not really infinites, but like guaranteed zero to death because of how his, um, one, two, three attacks work where you're not going into the third attack. You're just mainly doing the one, two and you're uh, looping them over and over again. So it's just way harder to DI out. Um, one that I noticed, Charles, that I took personally is you put Banjo one slot above Ken. Um, and I'd really <laughs> like to unpack that a little bit and just ask you what the hell your problem is. Uh, I think Ken clearly... is really, really bad. Like, that's I think crazy. I what have, I have, do? I have Ryu like an entire tier above Ken, which is like, I'm just guesstimating here, like probably 15 ish characters above Ken, just because to me, there's way less counterplay when it comes to Ryu. Ryu just hits you, he smacks you for 40. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, right? Maybe yeah. the first couple years of Ultimate where people's SDI oh. was bad, um, like Ken was a lot harder to deal with. And then like Ken hits you with Tatsu, it doesn't even true combo anything. Ryu hits you with Tatsu, it's either killing or he just cashes out with the damage. Ken yeah. just gets these like mini reset situations. Like you have to outplay your opponent so many times as Ken. Yeah. And then if they have good SDI, sometimes you don't even really get shit out of it. I I, I just think the character, I think the character is really bad. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I, really I bad? Yeah, I, I think the character is really bad. I mean, every so when I'm playing, when I'm playing the game, it's like okay. Um, one of the reasons why I thought Pikachu was so I, within like the first year of the game, a lot of people didn't think Pikachu was good. And I was one of the, I was dead ass. One of the first people that was like, wow, I think Pikachu's like top three, top five. Right. And because I was just playing friendlies with Pikachu, I didn't know all the crazy combos or anything, but like I take into account how many times my opponent has to outplay me and how many times I get out of jail for free. Like every time I'm in disadvantage, it's like, oh, cool. I just like landed with quick attack and he couldn't do shit. Right. So I'm like, wow, I'm playing this top player and like. They had to do X amount of work and they had to outplay me X amount of times. And then I got a, these so many disadvantage situations because X, Y, or Z. And that that's what that's like the breakdown in my head. It's not necessarily if I'm winning or I'm losing. I'm more so trying to break down the scenarios of like how many times did my opponent have to outplay me or I had to outplay them to get X amount of damage or X amount of positioning or X amount of stocks, right? So when I'm playing a Ken and I lose to a Ken, it's like, Jesus Christ, they like hit me here, then they hit the reset, then like I SDI'd out, and then they reacted to the SDI and then like went for this other reset, then they confirmed. And then there's Ryu where he just hit me and he hit me twice and I died. You know what I'm saying? So it's just the the amount of thing the amount of work Ken has to do, it, it doesn't impress me in terms of like a tier list. You know what I'm saying? But when I watch someone yeah. fuck someone up with Ken, it makes me appreciate it more because I'm like, dang. They have to get two or three resets on top of like reacting to the SDI, which is just like, holy shit. If that's the case, how on point do you have to be? How many, how much like wiggle room do you have in bracket? If you're not playing like a thousand percent on point, you're going to get shit on. Like, 
You know what I'm saying? And assuming they don't have a good way to bail themselves out of those guessing situations, right? Or those mixed situations, which is also like my favorite thing about the character. So that was a compelling argument, I'd say. Um, But I still think he's better than Banjo. Anyway, um, anything else when we wanted to look at Charles's list? I think it was a good list. Uh, I've worried me. Great list. I have one very important question because I play her. Amendment placement is kind of high, bro. I'm, I'm liking it. What's up? How are you feeling I, about it? I think Minmin <laughs> is really, really, really broken. Like, this character, I, I have Minmin, like, between Pika Fox, so that means Minmin is number eight on my tier list. This character is, like, the... If, if we're not counting Steve as a zoner, because Steve kind of does it all, I, I think Minmin's the best zoner in the game. Because you control... Like, in Smash Brothers... If your range is half the stage, I don't care how trash your recovery is. Like, that shit is crazy. And then on top of that, her her recovery starts getting really trashed around like 70, 60%, depending on like, you know, base knockback and knockback angle. But when she has a double jump, she can like fling out a ram ram and jump with it. And like, you can move and do tilts, you can jump and do tilts. Like, this character controls so much space to the point where I just feel like when you're playing on point and the fact that um, the ram ram, uh, I think I said Minmin earlier, but the Ram Ram, uh, the fact that it angles upwards, it's like you can shoot Ram Ram and then jump and fade back. Like the way Proto plays Minmin is, I'll I'll be watching it. I'm like, dude, how the fuck do you win neutral against this guy? And then he just goes off stage with Ram Ram, and then you're you're fucked because he just like throws yep. out the Ram Ram and double jumps back up. Like, j- just think about the amount of it, it's like better Sephiroth if I had to put it in the words where it's like, okay, so. You have more range than Sephiroth. Your moves are more active than Sephiroth, and you're covering a more upward angle with Ram Ram, right? And then you have like solid out of shield. Uh, used to be frame seven, but now frame eight up smash that anti airs. You have like anti air options for when people do jump in on you. Now, obviously, the weakness is the recovery, but again, with the with double jump, you can still fight back off stage depending on what angle your opponent's trying to edge guard you at. It's not. It's not that easy to edge guard Mimmin. I will say she definitely still has a below average recovery, but I just have a lot of faith in any character that controls that much space and you're controlling that much space while moving. Like yeah. Steven Minmin being able to fucking move around and do tilts, like that shit's not smash. You know what I'm saying? Like, or, or it's like, <laughs> I, we're, we're, like as we get like closer and closer with this smash power creep, we're breaking more rules, right? And moving and doing moves is definitely not something that you usually do, especially normal moves like tilts and shit. So, and also jumping, walking, jumping, doing moves, like tilts that are now aerials. It's like, it's, it's crazy. I, I just think I put so much value in that. Yeah, I was going to say she breaks a lot of the rules in, in like the best ways possible, obviously. And, and ultimately her weakness of offstage recovery being lackluster, she more than pays off for it, I'd say. Because I have her very high as well. I just think both in reality and both like just conceptually, she's so fucking broken. Yeah. Yep. The best zoner, if not one of the best zoners we've ever seen in Smash, in my opinion. Like, I, I mean, there's still like Smash 4 Rosa and stuff like that. Oh, that could be another bonus topic, like best X in Smash history. But, but yeah, like, there, just co- again, just there's so much strength in covering that amount of space. Do you guys have any other questions about my list? I mean, obviously, I, I didn't go like super detail into the bottom. To y'all, how long we you guys think we should take on each list? But I'm sure there's a couple. 10, like, 15 minutes each, probably. 10, With, 10's good. Yeah. Uh, why okay. don't you wrap it up by doing your top five and your bottom five? I think that's like the a lot of people will be interested in those. Oh yeah, sure. So my uh, my top five again. It was uh, off, okay. So Steve was in its own tier, and then we had Sonic. Game & Watch Pyramithra in their own tier. So that's four. And then my fifth was uh, Rob. Rob. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And then my bottom five is DDD, Zelda, Little Mac, Piranha Plant, and Ganondorf as the shittiest character in the game. Oh, wait. I think <laughs> you have Ganon as lowest. All right. Fair enough. I think Ganon is the worst character. I think Ganon is the worst character in the game. I don't, Bro, but that's that, fine. That double jump. Fuck. That is God-like. That's hard to work <laughs> with, man. That is a hard double jump to work with, man. Nice. All right, Charles. That was a what? It was a great way to start it off. Thanks, yeah. Charles. Marcus, you want to go next? Or you want me to go next? Oh boy, are we trying to get spicy or? Because are you? Do I'm you pretty have spicy, spicy, bro. I don't. All right, I'm I'm down to go next. Oh boy. Did you um, see mine? And are you saying it has a lack of spice? Bro, have you? Seen, all right. <laughs> well, well, hey. Is this because I'm white? No. What? <laughs> no. 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 All right. Spicy. Come on. All right. 
Now, like has, I have 8 million tiers, right? Nice. Um, and it also started for the same reason as you. I was making the tier list, and I was like, okay, well, Steve, just, you're Steve, right? Holy you weren't kidding. Um, this is yeah. spicy. <laughs> this, is, this is nothing. Yeah. Um, I was like, Steve is Steve. Like, I can't, in good faith, put him with the rest of the characters. I don't, I don't think that, yeah. He, his strength as a character just feels a little bit stronger than everyone else's. Um, and then when I was making my my S tier, I was like, well, Sonic does not feel like he's he's in the same vein as like Fox. Like, I just feel like there's a gap there. And then I, I just kept doing that where like I wherever I felt like there was a gap between the last character in the tier and then the character in the next tier, I would just make a new tier. Damn it. Um, I should have gone first. <laughs> that's exactly how i did it yeah 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 i mean you mentioned table, earlier dude. yeah you mentioned it earlier and then um also had this thought like bro like if you start arguing like if somebody's like oh my gosh you have diddy kong above pikachu like bro sure like i'm not arguing about like a couple places. spots like, yeah, yeah like they're that close if honestly if they're yeah. in the same tier like i'm not arguing like if you told me snake was better than mint or if you told me mint was better than snake even though they're like almost 10 spots apart, I would be like, okay, you know what yeah. I mean? Like it's like their strength as a character feels that close to each other. Um, but mostly when I made it, I was thinking about like three things. One was solo viability, which is probably like the thing that uh, was what I like the, the thing that I thought about the most. So like thinking about their matchups um, and then as I started building it, uh, obviously I started with the strongest characters first when I started looking at some of the lower characters, I looked at the matchups with the most meta relevant characters and the characters mm -hmm. above it. So some people may see Kazuya like, why is Kazuya down there? Because I looked at Sonic and I looked at some of those those matchups and I was like, yeah, honestly, like you're, I don't, I don't know. Like I looked at Bayonetta, you know what I mean? Like the, Kazuya has some matchups that are really tough for him. But then I also looked at one thing that made like Luigi higher, right? Where sometimes their game plan is really simple and is very strong. And if you can land those things, the matchup does not matter. Um, and the last thing was just like their lows. Because sometimes the highs out, out uh, class like the lows, like Little Mac has KO punch. That's like his high. But it does not outclass like the rest of Little Mac as a character, you know. You know never I mean? has, ever will. Yeah, never. Yeah, until he can jump, uh, until yeah. that that button does something, then that's not a character. So, um, yeah, started with Steve in his own tier. We might all have that. Actually, I'm not sure. Um, we didn't actually like look at each other's tier list, and then Sonic, and then Joker. Now you got Joker high. Yeah. So what happened was. I was watching Lights Out. It's actually funny. This is like, it was right after Let's Make Big Moves, <clears throat> where Illuminati makes big moves, uh, that Gavin won earlier this year. And Light was asking Leo, like, yeah, what would you do if you ran into Sonics? And he was like, yeah, I'll just go Joker. And historically, that's like what people say is like one of Joker's hardest matchups, like Sonic, Pikachu. And Light was like, yeah, like, I feel like when I play the matchup as Fox, like, I have a projectile, so I just kind of shoot it, and then I just play around, like, what he does in reaction to that. And Light was like, Leo, why don't you do that? And he was like, I'm going to start. And I was like, wait a second. Like, yeah. so this whole time, you could have been camping and, like, possibly making the matchup better for you. You just haven't been. Like, what what's going on here? And then I thought about, like, uh, some of like the things that he's not doing yet, like Leo's not doing because he's obviously like the premier Joker. But there's other ones like Omega Subaki, um, where he's not doing like the footstool out of shield into smash attacks and like like all the crazy stuff. Like I don't know a lot of a lot of like the Joker stuffs missing. Um, and I was like, maybe this character, maybe this character is still there, you know. So that's where that's why my Joker placement is so high. I still have faith in him as a character. I think there's a lot of things that aren't being done that could be done. And then Game of Watch. And then Sora's number five. Now, Oof. people are going to blow. Sora, what's Sora doing up here, bro? It's kind of similar to what Charles was saying. It's just untapped, bro. Like, he he just hits you, and then you explode with a, a gigantic move that lingers for 
80 years and it's just so easy to like land uh land like his wind condition which is landing a rising aerial or landing a grab you know like those things come and then he he kind of has a complete package in a lot of scenarios like he has a projectile he has like crazy edge guarding he has crazy ledge trapping he has crazy corner pressure through back air through nair like he he makes you second guess yourself a lot just because of like the strength of of a single move and the strength of if y'all watched the patreon episode from last week we talked about like why people learn and like like um what punishes and certain things that do more damage and the more that a sore player knows how to do the more he makes you second guess so yeah. i think there's a lot of strength in that as a character and viability wise like i don't think he has that many bad matchups i think his worst ones are like fox and diddy kong um and when you get to like this tier <clears throat> Uh, I think the tiers above, like Joker, Sonic, Pika, uh, Joker, Sonic, Game of Watch, and Steve, they don't really have bad matchups. And if they are, it's like negligible. Like they slightly lose. I think once you start getting to like Sora, Snake, mm-hmm. uh, Rob, they usually have like two pretty bad matchups, but they're all within the same tier, or it's just the characters that are above them, right? Um, and then. Uh, there's Snake, Aegis, Rob, Fox, Cloud. I actually moved Peach up. <laughs> I had her a tier below, and then I just thought about like the 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 turn up stuff. She'd be like bloop 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 bloop, and then you just explode. Like that's what is that? So, and I've just seen so much success from Peach. Uh, I had to reevaluate that a little bit. Uh, Diddy Kong is right below Peach because Diddy Kong unfortunately does not have bloop bloops. Yeah, uh, and then Bayonetta is actually a character that I could see me placing higher in the future. I just have her here for now, but I can't think of many times where I see a Bayonetta on the screen and see the character they're fighting, and I think that they're automatically going to lose. I actually think she's like one of the best solo viable characters in the game, and she does well against even like the most meta relevant picks like Steve and Sonic. So, um. A game of watch too like she can get out of game of watch's disadvantage i don't know there's a lot of strengths to bayonetta and then we're starting to see Sheik a little bit more which is great because we've all believed that Sheik was ridiculous but now they're starting to push her punish punish game and actually execute on it and pikachu is kind of the same thing we're seeing shiny do a lot more and then i round out that tier with min min again she could go up she could go down I actually Kind of like Charles' placement, where he had a, like eighth or something like that. That's good for me as well. I I think she's very powerful. I think Doramigi's probably the closest to unlocking Min Min's like actual potential because I think he plays her aggressively enough, but also defensively enough, and it makes it really hard to tell when she's going to uh, pressure you in a lot of scenarios. And then this is where like. You may notice if you're watching this, I have like A tier, A tier, B tier, B tier, or something like that. Um, and then the rest of the tiers just say click me. Once we get to click me, like I I don't care, man. Like it's just pet like that character's not a tournament character. Uh, <laughs> like it is, but like they're probably not gonna win the super major, right? Like they probably need like a pretty good secondary, if not two. Um, or a really, really good bracket. <laughs> a really good, a really yeah, good bracket. Really good bracket. Yeah, I think your um, your character always needs a good bracket. I think that's like one of the key differences is that those Steve at the top compared to you know DDD at the bottom. Mm, the yeah. idea of getting a, a good bracket for Steve seems pretty damn good compared to someone like DDD, <laughs> right? It seems yeah. pretty possible. Um. Okay. So this is actually one of the hardest ones I have placing, which is Wolf. Um. Same, dude. Same. I actually think that Wolf could go up a very large amount, but I don't think that... And I hate saying this, but I I just think it's true. I think that Wolf kind of died when Charlie stopped playing. Um, I feel like he was willing to push the character like as much as possible. And the current Wolf, I just don't see the things that... like he's. They're still not doing the things he was doing when he was playing like years ago, I don't, I don't get it. Like, like year two of ultimate. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I, I watched like very consistently. I'm like, I don't like, 
he would do like a a nair like soft nair footstool up b and get a kill off of something like that right and like i'm just like where, like where is that like you're not doing footstool up b's out of shield we don't have our shine confirms down and charlie was doing that he he was doing up throw back air. where are the up throw back airs we we like barely i rarely see it and it's it's true it, it's just not being applied um a lot of times when people know they can do up throw back air too they just start dying in so your up throw combos longer into up air i mean it's just like a lot of things that i think wolf has that isn't being explored um but he does have a really hard matchup with Rob, which <laughs> is tough for for him. So um, I don't know. I, I have a lot of faith in Wolf, but I'm not seeing it. And I don't know if we'll ever see it. So it's kind of hard for me to justify placing him above where, like, I'm starting to see things with Sora. You know, I'm starting to see things with Bayonetta. I'm starting to see things with these other characters. But I'm not starting to see it with Wolf, even though we know it exists. Um and then after this tier, y'all can just start asking me questions because I really, like, it's whatever. After this, honestly, I think that the characters below Kazuya uh, need some help if they are intending to win a tournament. So it's Corn, Wario, Marth, because, uh, you know, I'm a huge Marth believer, and then Terry and Kazuya. Yeah. I mean, the first question is Marth being Marth. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Lucina. eight, nine, ten spots above Lucina? Do explain. Okay. So, um, <laughs> he said okay. <laughs> yeah, I knew. I mean, I knew that I was going to get this. Yeah, question. yeah, so, it is, it is for sure. Um, Marth is an interesting character because a lot of his strengths come from not actually playing around Tipper. It actually comes from playing around the sour spot and into I, Tipper. <laughs> in, in into Tipper, yeah. And I think a lot of people think that Marth's frame data is actually that much worth worse than Lucina's. But in reality, most things might be one frame, like, uh, less safe, except for, like, close down tilt. I think close down tilt is, like, minus 9 or minus 8, and Lucina's is, like, minus 7 or minus 8 or something like that. So it can it can be grabbed after you do it once. Um, but Marth has very high highs, and I think as people get better at the game, they're going to be able to exploit marth's strengths in a lot of scenarios like there are times where if marth's forward airs you off stage at like 40 or 50 then it's like a like sour forward air it's a 50 50 on if you lose your stock because if he hits you with nair and fades back then you, you'll probably just die like the tipper will just kill you at <laughs> um and he has he just has a lot of confirms into into tipper like um, one of the most common that people see is like down air, forward smash, down air, up air, down air, back air. But he has like sour up air confirms, which means like when he's getting closer to you, like you have to worry about the forward air. You have to worry about nair one. You have to worry about tipper up air if he decides to fade back. You have to worry about sour up air. And then you also have to worry about a tomahawk grab or if they want to mix up your parry timing with all of that by doing... Uh, or mix up like the amount of time that you hold your shield by doing a side B. So like just that one scenario is like six different options that you have to worry about Marth doing. I don't know. I just think when I when I watch Marth, um, and when I play as him because I play as him quite a bit, it feels like he is a an extremely strong character and he kills about as consistently non-tipper as Lucina. Like, that, the average kill percent is roughly the same, but there are times where Marth can just completely rob you. Like, if he breaks your shield at 20, you just die, you know? like, And I, I value that. I, I think at this point in the game, if you want to compete at, like, the super highest level, you need to be able to cheat. I say it to Gavin all the time. I'm like, bro, you need a cheater character. Like, Diddy Kong kind of cheats, but, like... I need he some cheating like, like Steve. Yeah, exactly. I need some like <laughs> like I saw Sonic's practicing this like up air on a oh, platform God. spin dash up air kill confirmed. I'm like, bro, like like this is cheating. Like, and I actually think that Marth can can cheat just as well as some of the best. And I don't think Lucina has enough of the like Rob Rob factor that uh, the better characters do. 
Yeah, I feel like Lucina's robbery more comes from like the base knockback and consistency of her offstage. Right. But like you mentioned, like there are undiscovered things about Marth where it's like sour fare into like a 50 50 or something. And if you guys want to know more about confirms with Mars, you can check out the Smash University video. That shit is lit. Yeah, it talks about all good. the different good. You can get like sour up tilt on normal get up to forward smash kills at 40% and stuff like that. Yep. I think the biggest crutch about Marth is players that were good with Lucina tried to play Marth. And the two characters play so different. So a they good do. Lucina player will not be a good Marth player mm-hmm. at all if they don't know all the Marth stuff. Yeah. The uh, look at your tailors. The question I had was the separator between the click me's or like the the don't pick me's or whatever we want to call them, uh, unnamed tier characters versus B tier. Um, and especially because Inklings in that B tier, which I think is interesting. So what? I don't know. Do you want to just break that down a little bit? Because you have, so audio listeners, he has the last tier before, as he called them, the click me characters or the non tier characters. There's three characters in a, their own B tier as the last name tier list. And it's Olimar, uh, Inkling, and me Brawler. So do you want to just talk about that one a little bit, Marcus? So with those three, I sat there and <laughs> it's really strange. I looked at like the <laughs> tier above them. I was like, okay, Ryu. Luigi, oh man, these are some winners. Okay, and then like Zero Suit Sephiroth, I was like, there are times where they are winners. Like they just feel like they are yeah. very, very, very strong. Falco is unironically like kind of growing on me. I think some of the ways his moves linger and the way his hurtbox shifts, it's like what is that? And the amount of damage he can output. Wait. What's up? No, go ahead. Sorry, I, I never mind. Go ahead. Oh, okay. out. Sorry. So the, <laughs> um, yeah, but Falco's like doing a lot of damage. Hero is like sometimes just literally cheating. Like he just pulls out some spell and like magic burst with 100 MP. You're off stage, like GG's next stock, you know? So, uh, and then I, I started with like Ness. It wasn't even Link, it was Ness. And I was like, Am I going to really put Ness in the same tier as, like, Olimar? I don't think I am. But I couldn't justify putting Olimar in the same tier as, like, Ryu. So it, it was, like, this weird, like, oh, in-between. I know. It was, like, this weird in-between where I I just couldn't, I couldn't like, justify putting them in the same tier. And then I put Inkling there because, honestly, it, it kind of felt the same. I think Inkling actually can be pretty strong in a lot of matchups, but... And I think Inkling does have a lot of actually good results, at least in Japan. Um, and I was like, okay, like, and then me brawler sometimes just does the me brawler thing and hits you with <laughs> up air, up air, up B, and like, yeah, the character solid and uh, actually has like a pretty good matchup into like Game and Watch and a few of the other higher tier characters. So having like a a few meta like super meta relevant uh, matchups. Just was enough to like push him over the edge. I mean, we could move me brawler down. I wouldn't really care, but yeah, kind of like I, on the fence of meta characters. I I, I like yeah. that cutoff point. Yeah, I, I I couldn't like, I just couldn't justify putting them in the same tier as like a like a Luigi though. Like Luigi felt like the the last character where I'm like, honestly, I wouldn't be mad if you pick Luigi and try to win like a like win a tournament with just Luigi, but. Once I got to Olimar, I was like, I would be mad if he tried it with just Olimar. Because like, <laughs> what, what are we doing? Like, that's not happening. Like a l- really large tournament, not like a like a regional or something. Regional, like yeah. I think it's a good way to look at it. Because I considered that a lot when I tiered characters. Like, how well do they succeed at all levels of the game? That's important to me for some reason. And I think mm-hmm. because it speaks to the, the strengths of the characters, not just in a way where... They're just cheesing you and it's a low level and you don't understand counterplay versus do they also succeed at the top level. But then there's also an accessibility thing where if they're not succeeding at lower levels, they must be a really complex character, which doesn't like disqualify them. But typically complex means harder execution. So to me, mm-hmm. that that also meant something, which is why I, I value. I was thinking of Game & Watch when I was thinking of that and I was making my tier list, but yeah, just a thought I had. A random thought that came up to me um, just after Has says that is another thing I value really high is when the counterplay is just hold the L. If you just, so it's like when characters have this why not option because it's like, oh, well, why wouldn't I do this? Because the Mm -hmm. counterplay is they just got to hold that shit and it's still my turn. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Or if like the, the way you outplay it is like, 
it's just not even worth it half the time. Like I remember when I was watching Light versus Meister at Super Smash Con, the the one that Light won Fall Fest, and um, I was like, bro, like he's just using there. Like, can you not whiff punish this? And he was like, bro, it's not worth it. And I was like, but like, you know, it's coming. He's like, bro, it's not worth it. <laughs> and I was like, all right, man. And then I like watched him try to run up, grab after he did the nair. He spot dodged and down smashed him. And I was like, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Like it's actually, not worth it. it's not worth playing that. And I think there are a lot of characters that are in the higher tiers that, that uh, have options like that. Like Min Min. The rise of yep. Samus, bro. Samus yes, is dude. weird. I don't I don't find Samus to be like that like you can see where she is for me. She's not it's like the actually, fall of Samus. I that, is very high. That, high. Oh, that is two years ago that was very high, like compared to our last time. Oh, for sure, true, for sure. True, true, Samus's true, true. stocks have gone up for sure. Like it's like yeah. one of the most consistent, like what the heck happened? I don't know. Yep. Yeah, Rise of Samus, Corrin. There's a few characters that like. Game and Watch was that way for a long time too. Yeah, believe for the longest time, man. He's he's had one of the biggest come ups. I guess yeah, he got even. He went up even higher compared to a couple years ago. So, yeah, Game and Watch is probably most improved character on Ultimate tier list. And the 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 what about Sonic? Dropped the most. Oh, Sonic might be. Sonic Sonic is pretty good. Those two are. People thought he was dog shit. People thought he was so bad when the game first came out. Such a mistake. Uh huh. You fools. All right. Is it time let's, for Hazzies? Let's send it. Let's Mine is it. also uh, a fucking scroll. So let's get let's get going here. The thing I like about mine, actually, after looking at Charles and Marcus's, is that I have my top five compartmentalized right at the top, and they're their own five, um, which I thought it was cool. Um, so you'll see the way I did it. Uh, similar to Marcus. So my theory this time around, I'm making a tier list because I think about tier lists differently every time I make one. Basically, <laughs> this is the lunch table tier list. Like, can they? Do they sit together? Do they vibe together? Like, does this character <laughs> roughly have the same feel as like the ones like like Let's look around and check. You know, like like buddy system, so to speak, right? Like, do we fit in together? And when I did that, when I made my S plus tier, and this will be the first one on the tier list today, is I put Steven Sonic together. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that aside from I think they're incredible characters. I think the thing that was the difference maker for me putting Sonic with Steve is everyone's like, Sonic has like two bad matchups and maybe Steve has zero or some people theorize he might have like two. So I was like, okay, they're kind of close in that way. But the thing I see, and this is obviously a lot of credit to Sonic's as a player too, um, and the Sonic players in general, Aegis was definitively one of his losing matchups for the longest time. And now I think people are saying it's just about even after they were saying, nope, that's like really hard. Anyone could just like kind of pick Aegis and like do well against Sonic's. And that's just not fucking true anymore. Like he, he and Ken also does very well at this matchup. I'm sure other Sonics out there that I just don't know as well. They do so well in that matchup where I'm like, I think this character has the tools to do well enough in any matchup where you could conceivably say he doesn't actually super hard lose a matchup. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Or like, not at least to the point, like you guys were talking about Kazuya earlier, not at least to the point where it, it's a huge <laughs> deciding factor in where I'd place him in the tier list. Does that make sense? Or am I way out there? The way, the way I usually word it is uh, like, there's not a matchup that requires you to switch. Like right. You can, yeah. Right. Because, like, you can slightly lose a matchup and it's whatever, dude. It's you're just slightly losing. You know what I mean? And then I, f- I feel like when it gets into like the 6 4 territory, or I mean, 4, four 6 territory or higher, you know, like 3 7, like that, that's where it's like, oh, you might want to, because even 4 6 is like, that's not that much worse. But when you get past that, that's when it's like, okay, it might be time to yeah. switch it up. What were you saying, Gavin? I was saying it makes sense. I, I agree with you. I feel like. Sonic's flexibility will never be argued. Yeah. And his game plan too, right? Him and Steve have the best game plans in the game, in my opinion. So those two, they sit together. They're at their own, the head table together and that's it. Right. Um, The next, next part is, so I did all these on the lines where when I didn't even, I went literally in the order that the characters are in when you first boot up the website uh and it, which is alphabetical i think and i just started throwing fuckers like wherever they went and then like i would look at them and be like who belongs near like who is rosalina going near falcon yeah yeah that sounds sure yeah that sounds right and then as it went on i was like wait actually and i kind of just moved everyone which this list too like it's so fluid there are already things i see on here where i'm like damn i wish i moved falco up you know like because falco i guess he kind of is with greninja but i think he's closer to like that 
kind of Mega Man type territory, but not quite at the Ryu territory. So I don't know. It's pretty sporadic. <laughs> and you see what I'm saying though, Marcus, yeah. obviously. Right? Oh yeah. yeah, this yeah, way. yeah. So rounding at the top five, I have Game of Watch at three. And again, it's not just the success he's finding at the top level, which is probably the most defining thing about a character, but he is finding success everywhere. And not only that, but he's finding success as a counterpick character. We're seeing Spargo play him now and finding great success with him. Obviously, uh, Fundy's God is not going to have a problem picking up uh, Game & Watch. <laughs> uh, Joker next. Joker, uh, I think you all had him four so far, actually, already, which I'm glad we agree. And I got to shout out Omega for carrying the torch and making me see more modernized joker play uh whereas leo obviously is he's leo he'll always be leo and he's like godlike in so many ways but some of the creativity and some of the stuff that omega does i'm like conceptually like this character the ceiling has not been fully met yet uh and i still think his game plan is amazing his win condition being arsen is still so fucking good his damage output is crazy his stray hit and or uh true confirmed uh combos to get kills is just ridiculous um i i just think he's so good i really do still and i'm glad to see him back up there honestly in this game of all the top tiers i, I think he's like a fun one to watch and, and enjoy and then i had aegis as five which i was a little torn on and i was even torn on putting aegis in a tier below but i'll keep it a buck i still believe in this character that much as a matter of fact i put her right next to joker and like i, I fully stand by that or put them right next to joker and I think it's just like this character. So obviously the recovery, we talk about that, how poor the recovery is, how much do you get on stage with ages with Pyra and Mithra? How much do you get between those two characters versus how bad the recovery is? And I think you still find a lot of consistency and I'm still waiting for like that top, top, top 10 player type level player like someone just to fully commit to playing ages because we still aren't seeing that i don't think we're not seeing that as much as we're seeing more pocket ages which i also think is a strength of the characters that they're easy to play they're easier to play and pilot in terms of uh just their just their bread and butter stuff obviously very very hard at a top level of course and just being able to recover around characters or players like sonic on sonics is tough but with ages i just think the good outweighs the bad so much and so heavily. And I think they're just such a strong character. And again, if they do conceptually do well against Sonic, that's great. And if they don't, I still think it's like even going even with Sonic is nice. And I think they do fine against Steve too. do well against game and watch, like just looking at their contemporaries, I think is important as well. So that's my, my top five. I was a little surprised. It was the only one that had ages up there, but I do think their stocks are falling very hard uh, compared to, because when they started, I think everyone just had them as like potentially best in the game. So them slipping to top, like, maybe fifth, maybe sixth, maybe seventh is where I think you guys had them, is, like, a pretty significant fall for them, especially given the discrepancies between the tiers, right? Like, how strong is an S-plus character compared to an S-tier character? It's a pretty big difference. Um, so I don't know. What do you guys think about Aegis? I think it's important to talk about them, especially since I had them high. Uh, I had Aegis as four as well. You had over four? I think I had... Oh, is that wrong? I think I had... I had Aegis at... One, two, three, four, five. So I think I had them at seventh. Okay. Um, which I mean, I just think, bro, their recovery is really, 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 really bad. It's really bad. Um, yeah. and I I've just seen it get exploited more and more and more as time's gone by, and I think that not having. Uh, I think that they do have some safer confirms that aren't being used, like um, like some lightning buster stuff. Uh, but I, I do think that not having like kill confirms off like from with Mithra and having to rely on Pyra a lot to get stocks can be pretty tough. I don't, I don't know if that's the case. Like, if you actually have to rely on Pyra or not. I just think that that's currently where a lot of the Aegis players are. If I see them doing more with Mithra to get stocks, I may be inclined to uh, change my mind. But I think it's actually kind of hard for them to take stocks a lot of times. And I think when you have a character where it's hard to take stocks, but their recovery isn't as good, I think the opponent gets a lot of chances to win. Mm. And, where like Min Min has a pretty bad recovery, right? But... I don't think that p players get as many chances to exploit Mimin's recovery unless you're a character that can literally carry her off the stage like Meta Knight or Sheik or Pikachu or Jigglypuff. Um, but 
other than that, you don't really get too many chances to explore her recovery. So she's like hitting you from across the stage, doing 10 million. She it's really easy for her to take stocks because her ledge trap, like her two framing is stupid, her edge guarding is stupid, her moves are dumb. She has a killing up smash out of shield. I mean, she has a lot of ways to take stocks, but like I look at Aegis and I'm like, they're about to do some damage. They're about to cheat on the ledge trap. It's gonna be it's it's gonna be cheating. They're gonna do a lot of damage through the ledge trap, through the advantage state. Now, how are they gonna get the stock? And yeah. how likely is it for the opponent to reversal them and their attempt to get the stock? So I don't know. I do think they're well, still so, very yeah, strong. Really I do I do think they're a very, 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 very strong character. Um but I, I think they give their opponent a little too many chances for how bad their recovery is. It's well said. I uh I have a bit of a rant about Aegis. <laughs> I saw you laugh like halfway uh, yeah. through that. I was dying. Yeah. I was dying. <laughs> mostly mostly because I know Gavin has Aegis really, really high on. I'm pretty sure has Aegis really high. Yeah, on. it might not even be as high as y'all, but I still have a different outlook on characters like Cloud, Aegis, Fox. Um, I think if the first thing someone talks about when it comes to ranking a character is recovery, then it's pretty interesting. Um, because it's not like something on stage or anything like that. So first off, I think Mithra has some of the best individual Super Smash Bros. moves ever created. Um, I think of things like Mithra Four Tilt. I don't think there's many Smash moves better than that ever. Um, and there's a bunch of other examples. And um, not only do I think all of the strengths that everyone knows are great and all, I actually think they have better reversal potential than like um the chances of them getting reversal and edge guarding i actually think they're the ones that are the culprits of doing that not vice versa um i think their her boxes are really unfair considering how dominant they already are mm-hmm. um I think, I think they're Great. the ones i think they're the ones getting away with stuff they shouldn't rather than players cheesing aegis i actually think it's more often the opposite um for example, Pyra, like she's supposed to be like, oh, I can rush her down. Like this is my chance to like fight back because Mithra is like so oppressive. Pyra is more likely to win in a scrap and uh, do some sort of hurtbox shift and win unjustly, more likely than the opponent, in my opinion. And uh, I don't think their recovery justifies ranking them lower or something like that because. Uh, they are just a win neutral every time character. And I don't know. I value them very highly and things like foresight and their hurt boxes and things like that are way too strong. Um, but yeah, there, there's still going to be characters that are, are better, but it's just hard to, to listen to something like, Oh, their recovery and stuff like that when they're reversing more often than the opponent. <laughs> Uh, or like, oh, like you know, they get cheese when they're actually the cheesers, <laughs> in terms of. But it's always like on a smaller scale, like a foresight or a reversal because of a weird hurt box shift. Uh, it's just crazy because um, there's so many situations where it looks like you have the frames to deal with something Pyra does, but there's just this weird ambiguity <laughs> with her hurt box. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to account for that because that stray move you're going to miscalculate from Pyra will take your stock. Um, so it's really tough to ever uh, commit against Aegis, and it's really tough to ever press a button versus Aegis. Because not only are they better than you numerically, they're also better than you when it comes to weird Smash Ultimate, like, finicky type stuff. You know what I, I think it is? <laughs> which, which I don't know if this is truly the case, but I think it, like, it subconsciously there's always going to be some of it. Um you play Diddy Kong and I play Min Min. So like my brain yeah. mm-hmm. is like kind of wired to just seeing like the potential to explode them over and over again. And your brain is like, when the fuck do I hit them? I'm supposed to be the neutral monster. Yeah. And like I, I can't neutral them and they do cheat a lot. And I don't think that like, we're obviously like, obviously we have them. We both have them as very strong yeah. characters in the yeah. game. Um, but I do think, because I see it happen so much, 
that I'm like, I, it's just something that I think about very often. It's also, yeah. I see it happen when I, I watch like certain characters nowadays, like Sonic mm-hmm. and Game & Watch, and just those characters are so yeah. relevant that I, I'm just seeing it so much that my lens is probably focused more towards their lose condition than their win conditions. And I think your brain is focused more on like, how the fuck do I hit them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And They're I think, win condition, right? They, they just can't be hit very often. Makes a lot of sense, yeah. Especially in a game like Ultimate, all of these tier lists or any tier list ever is always going to be through the lens of your characters more more often than an objective or, or not, right? Like, And especially when it comes to these small discrepancies. Is Aegis better than Joker? And it's like, well, oh. the first thing you're going to think of is like, which one has caused me more pain is probably the first thing you're going <laughs> to think of, right? Like... <laughs> What sucks more, getting Tetracard at 30 and dying or, you know, getting edge guard, getting ledge trapped forever by Aegis? Like, yeah. it just sucks. It's a so, topic I've talked about a lot, and a lot of it is actually usually stems from Cloud, but the conversation is kind of similar with Aegis, where um, I get very upset at such simple descriptions of a tier list or a matchup or, like, a, like a placement of the character when it says, like, their recovery is worse than other characters in this tier and i just think that is um so lazy and uh just not looking into what actually happens in the game and in tournaments like like imagine if someone came up to you after a a top eight and said like yeah cloud and fox's recovery are just so bad after like the things you probably watched (laughs) that yeah as fox is narrowing and like cloud is back in your shit right. absolutely free like field poke setups to get kills uh doing 40 damage in two hits hurt box shifting everywhere like never losing neutral unless they make three consecutive mistakes to do so like there are so many things where it, it like it is insane that people will simplify the game to such a degree where they will just chalk it up to a recovery. It's like, can we even try? Like, <laughs> it's it, it's just to me, it's a little upsetting because considering um, that that we're not the ones simplifying the game versus these characters, they are simplifying the game for themselves. Right. Aegis, Cloud, Fox, they're not the ones that are at the mercy of like their themselves being simple. No, we're at the mercy of them making the game simple. Uh, yeah. Like, with, oh, how, with how think, oppressive they are and everything. Like, Yeah, I think, I, think I had them all right next to each other. I think, yeah. for me, Aegis, Cloud, and Fox are all... Because I, I think they're very similar in what they do. Yeah. I, th- I think, too, is when people make tier lists, they look for a reason to move someone higher or lower. So it yeah. might just be that that path, path of least resistance. That's just, like, human, yeah. human nature shit, right? It's like... Who's better, Pyromithra or Joker or, or Game and Watch? It's like, well, Game and Watch, you can't attack him off stage, and you, you, yeah. he's not losing stocks early off stage, but Pyromithra can. So, and it's just like the way people think about it, right? Like that, yeah. and it is a factor too at the end of the day. But like you yeah. said, it might not be as big of a deal. It's similar to what I was saying about Min Min, where it's like, how good are the goods like out of hundred, right. and how bad are the bads out of hundred? And that I, recovery, that's some points in bad. But mm-hmm. look at all the fucked up shit that they do on the daily i don't know dude (laughs) yeah and i think that's like what uh honestly kind of what separates that like once we get to these tiers of characters there's not gonna be that many things that really separate them so it's like if you can find like even one or two things that really like push them above or below and like for me that's what i was saying like if somebody was like bro I think Aegis is better, or like I think Cloud is better than Age. I think Fox is better. Like anything like that, I would just be like, okay, I mean that's fine. Yeah, it reminds me of stuff we've always talked about where things get ranked. I think a bit easier when it comes to visual dramatics and stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. back in the day when they saw something like Wario Waft, they're like, oh, so the game is two stocks when Wario saw it. <laughs> yeah, like, right. Oh, if you want to simplify it that crazy, go ahead. But you're dead <laughs> wrong. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's the same when, like, oh, I see these characters lose stocks off stage in this situation. Like, okay, like, write it down and send it when uh, there's so much more that goes into that. And, uh, you know, it just reminds me of, like, why other characters get over or undervalued. And I, I find it such a hard time to explain to the 
to like a a wide audience like what why i personally think they're misunderstanding it because some things are just visually more dramatic than others in smash and i think uh you know watching what fox or cloud does on screen might be a bit harder to interpret on stage but watching how they lose their stocks anyone can understand what happened there right like they're below ledge height and they lose their stock at a low percentage like and and they don't have like many recovery mix-ups or something it makes it easier to make a decision on what you value right then and there. So it's, it's a, it's, it's difficult for me. Cause I, I just, sometimes it feels like I'm just not getting through to people. Like I just like, uh, like I just, it just feels like such a big misunderstanding in smash bros. Yeah. And I, I think that, uh, for, for you, it's going to be a lot harder to explain for, to everyone else because you're that much better than everyone else. Um, and you can see things that other people just simply cannot yeah. see. I've never and- talked to a top player after they played Spargo or even beat Spargo. And they're like, yep. Thank God for that cloud recovery. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I wouldn't have won without clouds recovery. Yeah. Was that was easy. Thanks to clouds recovery. Yeah. No one's Good ever point. said that. Ever. Right. Like it's just, but then they're clouds mid. That, and it's like what? The hell? what? But that that does feed back into my idea and talking about the success the character has at all levels, because that's a lower level, right? Even that's like a even a mid or high level thought about cloud, you know, or or in execution. Yeah. I'm, but which matters, obviously. But what you're mm-hmm. saying and what really matters is how good it is at the top level, bro. I don't even see dom get attacked off stage that much you know yeah. in, in, against yeah. people at his locals that know how to edge guard belmont it's like he just yeah. it's it's obviously i don't want to say it's well it is kind of hard actually to edge guard him because he just knows he has so many and squid plumber same thing like good yep. belmonts they know how to recover really well and you can't just be like oh shit i gotta play a good belmont what do i do oh just edge guard him dude it's easy like don't worry about it it's like <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not month one anymore kind of yes kind of no like yeah if you get sure if you have like a super good matchup you might be able to but you think think dom you think the good belmonts don't know how to recover against your character of course they do or at least at least have a couple mixes for sure how many times have you heard like that conversation about cloud and then watch this person play cloud and not snap the ledge properly Mm -hmm. like how many times has have you seen this you've probably seen it a million times uh it's something yeah it's something we do a lot in commentary too is give that uh respect to those players like like spargo and light and whoever like who play these characters and still make recoveries look like it's like an exciting part of the game when they do it because normally like that fucking sucks but when they do it it's like holy shit that was a really actually uh, connie nabe too oh my god like his he's even the way he recovers compared to light is it's so cool like yeah it's different it is different it is which is really neat um wow um Oh, well, back to my tier list, I guess. Another, uh, another Gavin <laughs> round. <laughs> we, got, we got five characters Damn in. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, S tier. Yeah, so similar to Marcus, it's like, it's. I guess it's like roughly ordered, but I'm not, you want to tell me that Sheik is better than Rob? Go ahead. The one I will say that I'm proud of is Samus. I put her, I put her up Yeah, you there. got Samus high. She's, on, she's on a pedestal. I think her ledge trapping is so dumb. I think she lives forever. I I don't. I value the character, bro. And I think that might be high, but it is what it is, dude. I uh I wanted to put Samus that high, but I I just don't see Samus winning. If that may like winning an event, if that yeah, makes sense. Like, she's an I almost, see she's an yeah, almost winner. Yeah, she's an almost winner. She's very very consistent. Like fourth think, at best. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, fourth, just... like, dang, fourth at like an S plus tier with Samus. I could maybe see that. Oh, I see what you're right. saying. Yeah, so you I wanted to, I wanted to put put her that high, but I think that it would be a, a very tough road to win. I think she's so fucking good. I'll be like, what? I don't know, dude. I think she's so good. And I think Samus, like, she was well represented too on the Lumi Rank Top 100. So I was feeling pretty good about that. The on the line between S tier and A tier, this is tough, and I could shuffle this around a bunch. Like Mario might belong in there instead of in S tier flat out, and Terry might be in S tier. Like they were tough ones. The ones I I know Terry and Mario, I'd say I, I'd be happy switching either spot, move Mario down or move Terry up or whatever. Roy Wolf and Shulk, they all fit this vibe where I'm like, I yeah. know they're fucking great, but damn, I have not seen it in like a minute. You know, you know what I'm saying? Especially Shulk, like Mister oh he's great all right well let's see it then you know same with wolf like i believe in wolf 
it's just got to happen a little bit more. And Roy, low key, I think his stock is just falling. I think, I don't know, man. I think, I don't know. I love Roy. I think he's super cool. I just don't have that faith in him that I used to, but we'll see. Cole is back this year, so that could easily change. Uh, A tier, I think the standouts here, I think like Youngling could go down to that on the line probably. Just inconsistencies in his combo game and like getting the kill, which is tough and seems to be a consistent thing we're talking about. I think Luigi and Hero in this tier, I stand by that all day. Like same tier, like him and like that that trio or, or like that group works. Like Ness, Ryu, Yoshi, Hero. I don't know. Like they all they all vibe together. They all fit. Like same thing. I think I think Luigi. We were talking about Ken, where he needs to win all of these situations where you guess over and over luigi does that's his whole game but the difference is he just kills you like that that's like a, i think a pretty big difference between him and ken is ken's damage output is great and his mix is fun and like he's fast and all that shit but luigi is just like a rolling ball of death like it's just not i don't know and da- down b2 was like a big differentiator because i had him in that tier with Mega Man and byleth below but i was like if he didn't have down b i'd be moving him down considerably but that shit as a guessing game to get out of disadvantage helps him so much man yeah and put i don't know dude i think i think very highly of luigi when it comes to this is not the tier where it's like i'm picking this character and i'm going to like my goal well i mean reuse in this tier so it's possible but it's like this is a character that can do very well at majors and i think a part of that is luigi's kind of the fear factor that comes with him and Hero, I've been such a fan of Hero, especially watching Beast Mode Paul more. The game plan is so good with Hero, I think. I think buffing up, I think the massive threat is nice, but again, he's a character, he probably needs some help too. He's probably got some matchups where it's like, I, I need to get super lucky or have a secondary to, to get to this bracket. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't know if there's anything too crazy otherwise in here. The I would definitely move Falco up. That's one thing I noticed when I was... You have Yoshi. Really yeah, I think highly of Yoshi. I think he's super solid character. I think honestly he could go down one too, but I, I like Yoshi near Ryu. I don't know why that, that just makes sense to me. Maybe because I literally did it, but I yeah. don't know. They just seem like super solid, well-rounded, strong characters or some shit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this this tier was kind of a, a mix of either they have total bullshit or they're super well-rounded, is kind of how it felt. You have Bayo pretty high as well. I do. I think very. You and Marcus Bayo. had a uh, Bayo pretty high. Do you, did you want to like talk about that? Sure. Yeah. I I think she's just a character. She's a late game character. I think we've known that for a long time, especially given the fact that she got buffed um, a while ago, which she needed very badly. But I think the fact that she's so. I think there are so many different ways to play her and look at the way to use her kit, especially offensively. Uh, that we're seeing success. <laughs> I thought it was awesome and kind of poetic that Bloom and Lima were next to each other on the rankings, by the way. One spot separated. Um, I just think the character, in terms of offense, yes, but also defensively, like how she can bypass ledge trapping, like moving around Game & Watch ledge trapping. Not many characters can do that. Like She, I think, was really the first example of a character that broke the rules of Smash, quote-unquote, in a big way. Part of that was Bats within and for and Witch Time, obviously. But I think just her combo game, like no no character was really designed. I think Ryu broke the game first, like because he uh, I th- that was kind of expected. But I think Bayo just like damn, like she really plays by her own rules and the creativity we see with the character, both offensively and defensively. I just value it so high, man. I really do. Nice, nice. Yeah, I think for me that was like the big standouts, like Samus, Bayo. Stand by Samus. Luigi, too. I put Luigi high. I believe Luigi's in that character. Well, yeah. I think he's horseshit in a good way for him. Um, I don't know if there was anyone else where I was like, yeah, this feels different. My bottom five is Mac. I still think Mac's the worst in the game. I think Peanut is a genius, and, and that's that. Um, Mac Gannon. Uh, I should have put DDD fifth. Mac Gannon, which I think is consistent. Mac Gannon, uh, Piranha Plant. We almost all had DDD. the same bottom five almost. i would still say dd is worse than me swordsman i did i wasn't thinking about it at the time to be honest okay, with you okay. but i'd probably swap them Who, and we all had cares? fox next to cloud but fox was so, one slot higher than cloud. so that's an interesting that's one interesting. too friend of the show lavish tweeted a couple weeks ago or maybe it was last week he said order these characters fox peach uh cloud like which order would you put them in and i hadn't thought about the tweet since it happened then i made my tier list i was like wait did he say fox peach cloud and then i realized they're all next to each other on my tier list I thought oh that was same cool. right yeah, oh, I think yeah. so, dude. Fox Cloud, it's, Peach, same order. It's a good trio. Yeah, that's what I have. I Wait, don't know. You have Diddy right after Peach too. Really? Oh, you have. Yeah, we both have that. 
nice. That's kind of funny. That's weird. Dang. Maybe Holy that was my subconscious, like just thinking of that lavish tweet, but they there's definitely something up with that trio. Like they're up to no fucking good <laughs> somehow. You know what I'm saying? Like they're all cheaters in their own way. Okay. But so different and so differently too, though, right? One 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 question I have, okay. Oh. And maybe I just wait, why why'd you uh, why'd you uh oh see ya. What the heck? All right, go ahead. What's up? Okay, you flamed us for having Ken Low. Bro, look at where he is. What the That's heck? Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, B- <laughs> what you Better mean? than Inkling. B tier character. Well, oh, those true. aren't really ordered is what I'd say, too. I also think I have Belmont High, but I also... The thing with... <laughs> this tier... I, Belmont correct me if I'm wrong, but do you guys just put Belmont and Robin near each other? Like, Does that just make sense somehow? Yeah. I, I yeah. think it kind of does, sense. right? It does. All right, cool. I I saw that. Like when I got to Robin, I was like, "Where the fuck does Robin go?" I was like, "Oh, here we go." All right, sounds good. <laughs> Perfect. That worked out. I think they're like next to each other because it's it's Richter and then then Robin. So, um, and Puff too feels like they belong in that list. That 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 tier is so weird. Like Ridley, Lucas, like eh, like almost good characters, but either very demanding and very 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 difficult, or just kind of bad. Is how I feel about them. Oh, I thought we we almost had the same. That tier is all also very similar for for us. The Belmont yeah. tier, the game kind of similarly, maybe. That, yeah. Well, I mean, you got Belmont you Robin. probably you probably think higher of Belmont and Ridley than most people because of your region, what? and I'm me, so obviously I do. Or maybe you think lower of them. I don't know. Yeah, I think lower of them. Well, <laughs> I think I plays Belmont pretty ambitiously, to be honest with you. But I knew he didn't chill with Donkey Kong. Like I knew that wasn't a thing. I was like, definitely not. <laughs> or and oh, Marcus, you had Duck Hunt high too. I think I put not like super high or anything, but I definitely had Duck Hunt up there. Duck Hunt's pretty good. I think so too. Pretty solid. Yeah. Middle of the pack character. Mm-hmm. I guess the first thing is I don't have my own dedicated tier to the best character slash characters. Um, I don't even know if I have a specific reason for that. To be quite honest, um. I I especially don't think Sonic has it because I do think Sonic you I do think you can argue he loses a couple matchups, um. So I don't think he should be on his own tier. And for Steve, I think the basically the same argument. I think you can argue that he loses a couple matchups. So I'm just gonna put him as the best, and that's about it. Maybe not your own tier quite yet. Maybe in a little bit, but. Uh, yeah, and uh, I think it gets crazy. I have Aegis as number three. All right, that's higher than I. I wasn't sure if I like made that whole argument about Aegis and then like, <laughs> four. Was, like you, have, you have him like eight, eight teeth, like, <laughs> yeah. like lower than everyone else. <laughs> Aegis, yeah. you know how it is. Aegis, yeah. I mean, Lamar, Sephiroth, like they're all the same. So that means uh, we all have the same first two, and then yes. you have Aegis the highest. I have Aegis the lowest, and I think Has and and Chuck are they both fifth fourth. for you? Uh, we both have him as fourth, I believe. Or I had I had Aegis as fourth. I don't know. If I, had I, had. I had him as fifth. Okay, okay so yeah, yeah. Um, and then I guess the crazy thing is I have Sheik as the fourth best character. Explain yourself. <laughs> One crazy thing for sure. Do you, do you want do you I, do we actually want this explanation like always? Yeah, yes. yeah, I think so. Um, same argument as Aegis in a way, but even more flexible. Um. But the highs aren't as high kind of deal. They're pretty much just as high. Uh, I think. So Sheik is very safe and mobile. Sheik is very safe on shield and obviously really, really fast uh, with amazing projectiles from multiple different uh, angles. And by multiple, I mean two (laughs) with the needles, (laughs) but um who is yeah, multiple, to be fair? It's kind but... of like it's kind of like Mithra when it comes to oops, I got a stray hit. All right, here's my perfectly optimal combo. Like, you know what I mean? Like very flexible in terms of getting the best possible damage started. Um and along with that, having really good disadvantage, like amazing recovery, amazing ways of getting off the ledge, whether it's character unique stuff or just being generally good at it. Um and I just really value that. Always having a way to kill at any in any situation is very valuable. And also the damage output being so high. Uh, 
so I, I'll always value Sheik. It's kind of like Sonic and in, in Mithra in the sense of, is there really never something you can't do? And not only do I think there's always something she can do, I always think there's something she can do to be in a winning situation, not just keep up or anything like that, like win. Um, so yeah, I really value those characters. I view like Sonic, Aegis, and Sheik as being up there for the same reasons. Flexibility. Mm, and, okay. and being dominant with that flexibility. Like other characters can't match that. Um, so that's why, you know, they're, they, you, they're kind of up there for similar reasons. They're not just all really good. They're very similar. Uh, and then to round out top five, I have Rob. And I feel like this is really crazy because I've I've always been late to the I hate Rob party. And it's not he's not like number five because I hate him or something. It's more so like a pretty recent change of perspective for me with um, zero to deaths, actually. Um, and I think if you have access to your zero to deaths, like. You got to find ways to land them and. Uh, and not even like with Rob, it's not like zero to death. Like, Oh, I need to land it at this percent. It doesn't matter when he lands it. <laughs> it's good. Like any death, percent to death, death combos are, uh, I've been valuing those lately. So it's like uh, the, the best characters in the game here are a combination of those death combos and flexibility. And someone like Steve is, is both, which is valuable. But yeah. For Rob, it's just, it's not even like the simple, like safety on field or frame data or something like that. It's just, he has a lot of chances and he can kill you at any percent. I just really value the death combos. And then peach is right after that. So for me, it was just, who's better between Rob and peach because they're both some of the best when it comes to, uh, turning a hit into a kill. Then I guess the next one's Joker as much as I'm a fan of like the flexibility and I'm always arguing how good characters like Sheik and Sonic and Aegis are. And some of those won't be argued as much anymore. Now that Sonic's like pretty much everyone's top two with Joker. I feel like I had to find the balance between like, all right, some of these like death combo characters have enough flexibility to be better than someone like Joker. Um, so he is really, really good, but he is definitely not the same as he once was um in terms of where we perceived him in the meta but he's still really good he has a great hurt box great mobility great uh neutral he has some nice ways to get some kill confirms but his kill confirms aren't as great as sonic Sheik, aegis and i just really value the the, the death combo characters because obviously they're not death combo characters these characters do well in tournaments rob and peach not because of their combos but because of their flexibility, actually. So the fact that the death combos are more of like a fear factor and trump card kind of thing is is why they're so high. Um, and then Game of Watch is an interesting one because kind of like Rob, I was a little late to the Game and Watch party. But he's showing such a level of oppressiveness with Advantage State. And they've really found a way to make his neutral very flexible as well. Um, and I, I think it just rounds out with the uh, damage output from his first opening and the fact that the next opening could be a kill because of things like Chef and stuff. It's kind of like... Uh, Samus is basically, I think... Like, Game Watch is what Samus would want to be on the best possible day, I think. That's a good way to put it. Um, and... A, a character like Samus, like a, a worse version of that would be something like Robin. Robin, yeah. Um, so it's kind of like a tier list of like you get your bread and butters and then you try to take the stock after the advantage state. Um, and I think Game Watch is obviously the best character in the game at doing that. Um, what really put it into perspective from me for me was... Um, my last event, I was watching a Meister set with a friend, and Meister gets a, a hit at zero. I don't even know if it was a grab or a nair or whatever. And I said, um, it was versus Tilde, actually. And I said, oh, like, Tilde's dead. Um, and it was at zero percent. And my friend laughed. And eventually, Tilde lost his stock. Like, And I was like, yeah, I wasn't joking or anything. Like, this wasn't a joke. And I think because it lasts so long 
that you don't really realize it was basically a Kazuya combo, which is, <laughs> which, which is interesting. It was just, it's just very prolonged and very like, you know, like torturous. It's cruel. Like it, you, you just, you get hit for a long time and there, a lot of them are multi hits and stuff. So yeah, he's just, you know, me and Meister have found such a level of oppressiveness uh, that it, you can't ignore it. Like I tried to ignore it for as long as I could with like what I perceived to be his weaknesses and stuff, but I can't ignore it for much longer. Uh, and and then it's not only are is his ledge trapping oppressive, the, the edge guarding is really good. So, what's up, Marcus? I have a question. Um, for it. Also, it's really funny how we both we both like saw a Meister like something that Meister did, and we we're like, this character is way better than we thought. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, okay, so. I feel like when, from from what I'm listening to, and you could uh, help explain this, but for me, uh, Chuck and Has, it sound it sounded like we were looking at tournament viability. Like if you pick this character, solo main ability. When I listen to you talk about the characters on your tier list, it feels like you are talking about character strength in a match. Yeah. Like in a singular match versus anyone in the game, like yeah. what makes this character strong? Is is that the case? Because I, I feel like that's just a completely different way of looking at a tier list than I think most people would do. Yeah. And I, I think that if uh that's not clarified, the general audience would be like, What? What are you talking about? Sheik? Like Yeah, I feel like uh it's a trait of mine that's always existed and I'm a pretty stubborn guy. And not only do I go against the tournament results and stuff, I will purposely ignore them um, to a degree, right? I'm sure there's a lot of bias, right? Like if I was ignoring tournament results completely, maybe I would have Steve somewhere else or or Sonic. Or Game somewhere. & Watch or, yeah. Yeah, like so to a, to a degree, I actually purposely ignore tournament results. That's why like, you know, took me a while to have like Rob and game watch so high. Cause I just didn't see, see it. Um, but uh, it's for me, right. So far, these characters are a balance between flexibility, death combos and stuff like that. And there's a bit of an in-between. It's not like I, it's like one arch- archetype and then the next, like, you know, around like Joker and peach and stuff. It's it, there's, it, it just depends on just how strong, uh, certain things are, but yeah, after Game Watch, it's Pikachu. Uh, Pikachu is a tough one, and I think the coolest things about our list is you can see the hints of like old remnants of time, like mm. like, <laughs> like the, the the old guard still like lingers in these tier lists. Like, not all of them are dead. Like, it's not like fully modernized tier list quite yet. And Pikachu is one of those. Where we're we're still fighting for uh, what we believe in five years ago, uh, it, it's pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, Pikachu is very similar to something uh, like Sheik or something like that, where the damage output's really high, the hurt box is really flexible, uh, the mobility is all there, um, and I don't care if someone says like, "Oh, what if I get cheesed?" or "What if this happens?" It's like I will ignore you. If you get like, cheese and you have quick attack, that is a million percent like, on you. Like you suck. You got fucked. Like that's it. Don't tell me like don't tell me, oh, my recovery's bad. Like, or, or don't tell me like, oh, I'm gonna get cheese. Like I don't want to talk about Smash Bros. with you if your thinking is that simple. Uh but yeah, Pikachu is really good. Uh there that we're starting to get to the point where like there are matchups that are pretty tough. Uh And then the real hard one for me was like the Pikachu Cloud Fox trio here. Um, Cloud and Fox specifically were really tough for me. All Uh, four of us had them next to each other. You're the only one that has Cloud over Fox. Yeah, it's really tough. I just... When I was thinking about these two specifically, I was thinking about the impact they have on me when I fight them. I was thinking about uh, their matchups. I was thinking about their like stuff like that, and I just think Cloud's matchup spread is better. Um, Fox has some matchups that are straight up bad, and like I don't, 
I don't think Cloud has as many of those, if if any, that are like just straight up bad. Like uh, maybe, but like I think Fox has more of them, and some of them are like a bit funny in terms of like kind of like Diddy Kong, where they're against characters that aren't that strong. So it makes you question a character's viability altogether. Um, but after that, I have Diddy, and I think it's kind of crazy how high Diddy is on all of our tier lists. Not not crazy in terms of like it's wrong, but Diddy's just there, bro. Diddy's just that guy now. <laughs> Shout out like, to you, bro. Yeah, I mean, Diddy's just go. one of the best characters in the game for like a while now, and that is dope as fuck. It's like uh, the it's like the prophecy like characters in Smash will never be bad. Fox, Pikachu, and Diddy, right? Yeah. Or like the big yeah. three. Well, there you go, man. Diddy needed some yeah. buffs, kind of. Just yeah. you yeah. and all the other but Diddies. Least, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, big. It's, with the Diddy, I feel like it's one of those things where he he loses matchups like the, the, the like very bottom half, and then I guess like Pac Man. But even then. When I watch Diddy versus Pac-Man, it looks doable. And I think that's what started started to... I mean, Gavin plays Diddy Kong, and I, I don't know. But it looks doable. Um, it looks like it could, it could like use a completely different style. And that's something that really has been resonating with me a lot, is how, obviously, as Gavin was saying, flexible that a character can be. Yeah. Um, and I think Diddy Kong can be... You could do a lot of different things with the way he plays. And I, I think those, if like, it's not, I don't know, what are the characters like Villager or whatever, who are like really aren't common. So it doesn't even matter. Like how likely are you to run into one of those? But if you're running against like a Pac-Man or something like that, it, it looks doable. So I think just seeing like how many matchups he can win really, really yeah. so put into perspective. Diddy is more on the flexible side. I'm using flexible and death as my, traits for for this s tier and diddy is flexible with a hint of peach uh so he's very very strong and after that i have kazuya probably higher than i would put kazuya on any other day but you gotta give it up to yeah you gotta give it up got death yeah you gotta give it up to death and um he also had, just has crazy stray hit damage. He has way, nice ways to get kills out of shield sometimes. Like he has a hint of well roundedness, which is frustrating because <laughs> uh, just a just a hint for a character like that is enough to to give him consistency in tournament. I think, and it's starting to get diff- different where it's not like uh, like around after that. It's not just some character that has death combos or flexibility. They may have it, but it's a bit different. Like around Snake. Snake is is pretty different. Um, It's hard to give simplify a trait for him. He's closer to flexibility than anything else. If anything, you could just straight up say that. Um, Yeah, I value Snake a lot. Um, It reminds me of Diddy in terms of like a matchup can seem hard, but all of a sudden you found like a completely different play style that gives you a chance. (laughs) And he's just so strong. (laughs) Like he is strong. He is so strong and, um, you know, he has like a lot of borderline checkmates with, with edge guarding and ledge trapping and he has a lot of chances to play, but we're starting to get to the point where characters are clearly different than the best of the best. Um, I would say around like Kazuya, uh, we're clearly getting to a point where, uh, we're not as great. But I think he has enough going for him where you can put him in the tier with the best of the best. And then Min Min. Um, Min Min has like that oppressiveness, like Game & Watch and stuff. But I think what puts Min Min a little bit lower on my tier list is I actually don't think she's as flexible as the best flexible characters in the game. Um, there are definitely holes, and you can see them. You can you you can fight one of the best Min Mins, and you can make them uncomfortable just with positionings and presence. And I feel like the most flexible characters in the game, it's not that simple to find a top player's uh, like weakness or making them feel uncomfortable. But there is a clear strength where you are looking at something that probably shouldn't be in the game. (laughs) (laughs) When you watch the offstage stuff or like, you know, certain matchups, it's very clear that this was a big mistake. (laughs) 
<laughs> and they never fixed it. Uh, so, yeah. They did fix it. No, well, well, fix it oh my god, they did, they did, That did help a lot. That did, did help a lot. But she, she oh, was, the nurse are huge. But she mostly was, for really good characters to to keep up. Uh, <laughs> I will say this right now: pre patch Min Min was probably top three to five best characters. Like I thought she was three. the best character in the game. Might have been the best character because there's guaranteed shield sure. breaking setups. Guaranteed. Yeah. Like you get hit by a megawatt and your shield's broken. Yep. So like that shit was fucked up. And her up smash was one frame faster. Like, yeah. Jesus. And Christ. then there's Mario. And Mario is interesting because he's like the cutoff point was hard. I even asked earlier in the episode about like how did you guys do it? Because it was so hard for me. <laughs> um I think Mario keeps up because he has a hint of flexibility and he has a hint of death. And it's not the same. It is clearly different to me. It's not an item. Um, his flexibility isn't like chic flexibility or sonic flexibility. But he has it, and I do truly believe in it. Um, Mario is actually one of those characters where I truly could see myself um, playing the character and maybe maybe winning. Um, I don't. I've never really talked about that because he's not like high on the list or something. But it's like a a random thought I have once in a while. So I believe. I see. Like, I have a vision with Mario that I think is a winning game plan. Um, I think he has just enough of the flexibility and death. Uh, and then I think the cutoff is there. And then Sora. Sora is a really, really hard one because I think all of the things I value could have put Sora in this spot. But I actually think he has hard matchups, so that uh, obviously they all do. But I think his he has enough of them to where... It starts to look like he's floundering um, in certain situations, uh, but the potential is there, and it kind of reminds me of things like Rob and Peach, where the basic game plan is actually effective enough to be a tournament threat, and right now the crazy stuff is more of a cherry on top rather than the, the core of the game plan. So something could easily shift at any any given time. But yeah, this is still really high placement, I think, for Sora. I think this podcast valued him pretty high overall. Um, but yeah, I guess other than that, I, I leave it up to y'all if y'all have any questions. Um, I'm, I would shift a couple things around. I think right now I had one version of this tier list and I, I looked at it and had some thoughts but never actually fixed it. I'd probably put PT a little lower. Um, Damn, Gavin and having versions in Smash Ultimate. Wow, how original. Cool. <laughs> I might Sorry. put Duck Hunt a little higher. I might do some silly stuff like put Zelda above Plant or like something like that. Like, <laughs> I, I, I genuinely would consider it, but I think I got my, my point across for, for the most part. Why do you have a Lucario so low? So it is pretty low for me. <laughs> uh, Actually, yes. But... I feel like this is probably higher than most people would expect. I actually think that character isn't just like some cheese bot. I think the character has great frame data, great mobility, great hurt box, great out of shield, great shield pressure, blah, blah, blah. And I just think the character's solid. I truly believe that Armadillo is getting more and more wins. Reset Leo with a 3 0, shoot on win. Like, I'm not crazy. Everyone is losing to it once in a while. The character's good. I'm sick of being gaslight into thinking not only is the character not good, y'all are telling me it's one of the worst. And that's Ooh. Really silly. Uh, oh, question. Question. What? <laughs> Uh-oh. Bro, I can't I can't ask any serious questions. My questions are so stupid. Uh <clears throat> so I noticed that Marth is below Wii Fit Trainer. Um What's going we, on there? We fit is actually that character, bro. Uh huh. We fit. Could <laughs> we all just uh, what? We fit could be ar- argued to be higher, actually. Sure. Huh? Okay. We fit is really good. Ah, uh, I, I'm not a we fit believer personally. I'm not, and I have the best one in my region. Like I just your your percent goes from. The color white to the color red a little fast. That is true. One there, see ya. But then it's like, bro, how are they landing that? My percent red a little too quick for my taste. 
You uh, have I, Wario two spots under Sora right after Palu. And Mario. So, I, I like, am do very you glad. believe in Wario? Is that, is that too... Are you all saying that's high or low? I think that's pretty high for you. Usually I think you put Wario a little lower, but... Really? Still yeah, Mario. I mean, what is that like? That was like... That's like what? Like 18 or something like that? That's not super low. So the way I view Wario, I think... Um, and something that's been a little upsetting over the years is I think he's so good all these years, not because of walk. I think he's so good because of actually flexibility um, with weight, recovery, frame data, air acceleration, air mobility. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, so that, that a lot of matchups can be uh, changed pretty heavily and, you know, but I, it, obviously, he has high damage output in some situations. He has great kill confirms and a great win condition and like the fear factor and playing around that. Having something like a command grab while playing around those win conditions is amazing. And yeah, I still value him. Um, but the reason he isn't in that S tier is because a lot of his worst situations you're going to run into when you go to a major tournament, I think. Yeah. Um, so... I I still don't think there's there's been additions to the game and watch matchup, but I don't think it's enough to make a big impact. Um, Steve is like honestly might be just as bad as Sonic on paper. So like you know these situations were really bad before some of these characters were added or became relevant, and they just got worse. Um, but there's things like Sheik and Aegis and Rob and Peach uh, that are perfectly fine. And you can win. Even Joker, I think you could argue you can win, even though I've always not been a fan of it. Even Pikachu, you could argue you could win. Uh, Cloud is actually perfectly fine. Um, so it's a big balance of like fine and really, really, really bad. Um, but then there's like some smaller things like uh, Diddy's like s- a, such a good character the last couple of years. And he beats Diddy. Um, but then there's like Kazuya is really tough. Like, you might, yeah, Kazuya is rough. Uh, but yeah, like he's still really good. Uh, I probably would keep him where he is if I had a second chance. I, I still think he's right. great. Um, but uh, yeah, I have I, I was just talking about Samus. Like, Samus is so high on everyone's list. Samus feels like the new Pac Man or something. Like, I don't know, climbing up the ranks. <laughs> I, I do feel like Pac-Man, because Charles brought up the the DD set at uh, SmashCon against Sonics, and I'm like, damn, <laughs> I kind of forgot. Like, there is real value in that character, and I think Bro Life brought out Pocket right now, Pac-Man. Yeah, I still, I think that was a good call, Charles. I, I just want to give you credit for that because it definitely influenced how high I put him on my list. So that was a good. It was a Pocket reminder. Pac-Man. That's the crazy thing. DD's crack, yeah. bro. He Number tied one. him out with his pocket Pac-Man, like one of the, like the second best character in the game, the best representative of the character. Like, I mean, I know Sonic's overall didn't have the greatest Smash Con, and that could have also like you know been accounted for that, but still, like that's insane. So for me, the the most important cutoff for A tier going into B tier was actually Lucina and Olimar, as you can see, and my attempted vision for it was it's always about flexibility right so around b tier is to a point where there are situations where i think you have no choice but to have a weakness i think um and you're going to be flailing for your life a little bit um and praying and playing to your weaknesses kind of thing um and i think around lucina is where i would cut that off for example, if I look at Olimar, I think there's a lot of situations where he has no choice but to accept that he is worse than you or something. Like, I don't know how to word this, but there will be situations where he's going to throw out a move that decides if he gets a hit or a hit. Like, he will gamble and flounder and, like, and like hope because eventually, like, he will just not be as flexible as the characters above him. Um, And I think that's around the point where it gets where it started, where the game plan for Olimar to Little Mac, you can genuinely be playing against a weakness of the character Uh, where the other characters, the matchups are a little bit more interesting in terms of 
you're it's going to be more nuanced and you just can't take something and be like haha like your character can't do this or this or that i think from lucina to steve you have enough flexibility where you're not going to feel that overwhelming pressure of i have no choice um and i think the rest of those characters there's often situations where your weakness will show off at top level uh even if you're really really good so that that's my vision of it i didn't even really say that in my head when i did it but that's definitely why that's a great like explanation for the cutoff point and yeah. it feels like Olimar was kind of in a lot of people's cutoff points for some reason you he's know what I mean? like, like he's almost yeah. there he's like yeah. so close to the promised land but he got voted out right he got <laughs> vetoed out from the beginning so he's never coming back yeah so and i feel like lucina is a perfect example of flexibility because she's like the one of the cookie cutter characters of ultimate from day one so mm-hmm. um yeah that there, i think there's an there's a, there's some interesting interesting stuff we didn't talk about zero suit much it's kind of sad that she's like just not in the conversation ever she's hanging in there man but something hanging. i actually valued a lot was actually something has said a while back i never really put into perspective that she's actually one of the better picks for the best of the best right now mm-hmm. like game and watch and stuff like that and um that's pretty interesting because she's never been that character usually she's always been the character that's held back because she's one of the weaker characters against the best um but she's in this weird it's just weird to be uh she's always been anti-meta but she's anti-meta in the opposite way than she's used to being i guess um which is interesting but yeah that's that's my tier list my worst characters are uh Little Matt Ganondorf, Dr. Mario, Kirby, Isabel. Ooh. I'm surprised you have Doc that low. You definitely have Doc. Yeah, you definitely have the most different of all the the bottom five. I'm surprised you have Doc that low. I thought you, like, hated that character. It's it's always flexibility. That's why you have Wii Fit so high. (laughs) I guess. Um, Don't don't laugh at that. That was terrible. Are there any characters that you could see moving like making drastic changes this year Ooh, um is that to gavin or is that to everyone that's a good question could be to everyone sorry yeah. gavin sorry gavin okay drastic changes um sora i'll go mm-hmm. from like top to bottom and see if i can see anything sora uh Um, I do genuinely think Lucario is really good. I think Meta Knight could go up. I think I do think Banjo could be better. I do. Uh, I think Duck Hunt could be better as well. Um, that that's it. Interesting. Uh, drastic. That is. I was so sure you're gonna say Bayonetta. That's what made me ask the question. I, that was the one that was on the tip of my tongue. I'm not sure because she's already pretty high up. Um, I was gonna say hero, but I feel like I put him so high now. It's, it's kind yeah, of tough. I put hero way higher than I'm used to putting hero. So that yeah. was that was it, a one too. It feels kind of out of nowhere that we all did it. Like nobody even talked about, it. and like the I don't even know Just if we all had a character being meta or something. Yeah, like, like I don't know if we even like had similar reasons. We just kind of put them there. Hmm. It's interesting. Okay, has. I don't know why I chose Hass. I was just... You did, yeah. I don't know, dude. The tier list, I felt like so much of it was solidified pretty well on my end. Like when it, A couple characters moved big time, right, since the last time we did it. Uh, oh, boy. Like, who do we even pick here? Who are we... Because to me, I think of players that change the perspective, right? And a lot of the characters we're talking about right now, like Hero, for example... We didn't really know Beast Mode Paul. Like he kind of just showed up and started doing well. And and the the hero from Japan as well. There are a couple of good hero players that kind of showed up that we didn't know. So I think it might be less about the players we know and just more about raw character potential. Is this the year of the Shulk? Just kidding. No, of course it's not. No, it's All not. right, move on. Yep. All right. Uh he's still high on my list. Corin was one. Year of the Ken? Now we're talking. Year of the Belmont? I wish. Uh I am entering Genesis. That's all I got to say about it. Uh, <laughs> not Banjo. I'll tell you that much. Uh, even with oh even God. with what you said about player 
spotlight with Tori Gurry, you don't think Banjo will be? I thought you were talking about yourself. I was like, damn, Gavin's feeling it. No. <laughs> yeah, dude, you know I love PG, dude. I'm such a fan. <laughs> and I, I do not like Banjo. I do not like Banjo. But Tori Gurry, like, you got to respect what that guy is doing, man. It's so impressive, honestly. Um, We are – okay, here's here's where I'm going to go. We're entering this kind of nasty part of the meta, meta too where people are going to try to win no matter what, which means I think more timeouts and more slower gameplays – uh an option so with that i think maybe it's year of the pack bro maybe it's your pay maybe pac-man comes back maybe we see a little uh i just don't know who's gonna do it like is t gonna come back to like full-time pac-man because he's been a lot of nausea sinji did just have like his potential sinji. ever so true all right yeah we'll th- send it pac-man uh gonna go up quite a bit we're gonna be reminded i guess where pac-man belongs uh charles who you got I have, ooh, this is tough. This is tough. I have drastic changes. Luigi, uh, I have Banjo, and I think that's probably it. Um, I think, like, Mewtwo might have some potential, but, like, do I actually think it's going to happen? Not really. Um, yeah, I'd say those two. Luigi. I, I. Oh, Falco also has a potential of having, like, a drastic uptick. He's just so popular competitively. He's yeah, so I'll say those three. We have me. a great Ooh. Falco, in Luigi North Falco. Bad. We have multiple Falcos in Japan that are ranked high. Like he is it's... strangely popular at a high level. Like it's, I've never quite understood. I in the top. Yeah, and I'm not even saying it's because he's bad. I just didn't understand how he was that popular. Like people like Falco, bro. I think it's a man like from melee yeah. on, like it, like the way he plays he's and a, stuff. He's and a cool guy, I guess. He's a cool guy. He's a cool guy, <laughs> I guess. So, um, Bardi, man. Here's, here's what I got to say about it. I think there are a lot of characters that we wouldn't have had anywhere near where they are on the tier list one year ago. Uh, Incineroar, for example. I think even Luigi falls in that category. Samus. Like, all these characters that just had really good years. And I'm trying to figure out... Corrin, right? No one really had Corrin that high up, at least. Corrin probably I'm had try- the biggest uptick. Yeah, Corrin was a, a big upgrade, for sure. What... Like I want to say Falcon, but I feel like that's so that's such a gamble. I know, I know. I'm a believer though. Yoga Uh I'm a Chunky Kong believer, but how much can you really bring DK up? Yeah, no, that, that's just fair. tough. Maybe I me mean, Brawler, like Brawler, could, he's such a cheese lord. It could happen. I don't makes know. me wish I like replaced Bowser and DK or something. I could have easily done something like that and like not batted an eye because I'm a, I'm a believer of of chunky kong as well i think he's fantastic i feel like he has like a the the eye for dk that i think is necessary the balance between fundies and specific lab stuff and uh like um getting everything you can out of like every individual matchup and like uh because i've always viewed dk such like a he's like a it's like a you got to be like a heavy scientist type of player like where like not you're not just like a like the typical type of dude who plays heavies because you want to be an idiot and like hit hard like it's like a sword heavy like 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 it's like you gotta be like you gotta have the eye for it yeah those tilts are intangible yeah. arms so he do be yeah. sorting it up like dk is art it is an art form and if you don't get it that's okay some people don't get it you're just you're just born with it. You're born with it. Very hard to win with. That's all I gotta <laughs> say about DK. All right, you guys want to? Uh, what did, did everyone go around the horn? Yeah, yeah we did. Well, I guess Marcus got it. what character is gonna be the best? Upticks, man. Upticks. Next month. Oh, some some drastic or changes. Down picks, drastic or down picks. Or down picks. Yeah, it could be up or down. Um, <clears throat> I think I think Mario is gonna have a crazy year. And I don't good crazy Mario. I think it's gonna be a good crazy. I really? Think, I think between Snow and Karama, like you have and, a good eye. And Dark Wizzy, I think between yeah. them all, like because I've watched a lot of Snow recently. Snow is so good. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? What is going on? But would I say that Snow is like a better Mario than Karama? I don't think I would, but I do think there's a lot of very, very very interesting things that i see snow doing that i'm like oh my gosh if karama stars doing this or other way around i'm like oh man like this could be this could this could turn into something um 
That's how I, sorry, bring it back. That's how I feel about Omega and Leo in a way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's a kind of traditional, like fundamentally sound. Not that, you know, these players don't all have fundies, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And I think we, we've we already said most of the ones that I would say, like Falco, or just because there's so many of them that can work off of each other. Because that's normally like what causes uh, drastic swings in like a, a meta is like, or community type of thing. Uh, yeah, like two. It's usually like two or more players that just they want to be better than the other one, so they like either steal some of the things the other one's doing, or they just start applying certain things a little bit better than the other one. Like I feel like literally Shattuck was like very very good. SmashCon happened. Nao did very well. Shattuck was like, "Ain't no way that's gonna happen." No, no, no. I'm the best core, and then Shattuck was like. Like, you know, so I, I just feel like that happens very, very, very yeah. often. And um, I think that could happen with, like, you know, Mario Falco or something like that. So, I don't know. I'm very mm-hmm. interested in the year. We we all agree on one and two. And I think we all agree that's not going to change. Who do you all got being number three in the game uh, when this year is over? Because you right now, like, characters. Official? You mean, like, on an official tier list that, like, there's, like, a whole panel or whatever? Or just universally agreed upon in your opinion in your opinion oh okay uh hmm. i think it's pyramithra still okay well i would i i put game and watch above pyramithra because the ceiling is like almost like uncovered but right now i think pyramithra players kind of suck and none of them really solo main and they're very unoptimized and mithra advantage state should be just as crazy as Agreed. It should be just as good as Game & Watch Advantage State, but they're just not... I, I don't know. How do you... I don't know how you don't frame trap people with that up air and up tilt. But, hey, I mean, it, it is what it is. But I think uh, uh, Mithra is extremely unoptimized. Pyra is extremely unoptimized. So I think, on paper, it should be the third best character in the game. But everyone just pockets the character so we don't get to see the like high ceiling. Kevin? Um... It's really hard for me to say who should be the third best. Just uh, a guess. So we can I, look back at I think year. it should be Aegis or Sheik. I like the Sheik answer. Fair, fair. Yeah, Lock and Sheik to be cool. That is a cool guy answer. I Sheik. would say, because I said Joker <laughs> this time. Bro, I think, can I say it? You're the Rob, dude. Let's go. Let's lock it in. Let's let's have a fun answer here. Okay. I'm going, you're the Rob, man. I don't know if it's actually going to happen, but hey, lock it in, dude. Hey, Leo, go. Pocket Rob coming through. Uh, Well, yeah, that exists. That's cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that about what wraps it up. Hell? That Thank definitely you. wraps it up. Well, what the hell? Thank you so much for supporting the show. I hope you all enjoyed the tier list episode. We're going to get into the Patreon content and talk about our least favorite characters, which is kind of fitting considering the tier list stuff. So thank you so much. 